Okay, uh, we're going to continue the workshop and move into a little bit of science, mathematics, uh, high energy physics, and so on. So, thank you very much, Oliver, for being with us. Uh, looking forward to you. Leibniz once said, we live in the best of all possible worlds. Now, we can say, we live in the best of all possible times. Why? I mean, there are so many things happening every day. Uh, an example is uh, we have an information revolution. Could you have imagined that you have a tablet where all your library, thousands of books are on it? That was me proud when 2010, when the iPad came out and books and everything go there. And now the uh, in, uh, technology revolution with the 3D printers. I have to uh, introduce Liz. Liz is, uh, was working on this project. She is a co-author of the article. And she has done all the printing stuff. I, I don't know about 3D printing so much. That's a photo from 2012. And she just won, just last week, she won a prize for her work on uh, on this uh, study on 3D printers in education. <clears throat> so you see Liz here and two of my colleagues in my office. So she brought the printer and uh, to class and it was a big success uh, to her students to see how this, uh, how this works. So uh, 3D printing is a lot in the news. Just from the, from the last two weeks, here are two snippets. I mean, one is the Scientific American. The current Scientific American has a lot on 3D printing. Uh, National, National Geographic had this movie. Can I make louder? Well, then take that to the third dimension and make it something to hold in your hand. Oh. What is the material that makes this thing? The scanner inputs every facet of the wrench into this computer, creating an image that will be sent to the printer. Can you make that ring red? Sure. I want to select it and paint it to not have pieces red. I see. All right, David. Printing's done. I'll stay with the wrench. Right. That's amazing. So all it's left to do is blow off the little cow. <laughs> you just printed this. That's right. Now I have to go with nothing but a bunch of powder and butter. There's a box of powder. Yeah. That is incredible. So if you lose your tool in space, you can print out another one. By the way, this company is just very close nearby where I live. So I have once to visit them. It seems to be an exciting, exciting thing. So another thing which is close to where I am, uh, that was just last week. They, they released the first video of this uh, Robobee flying. And as I understand, part of this is at least planned to be Print it on a on a 3D on a 3D printer too. So their technology is just amazing. Uh, and then of course this fantastic book, <laughs> which uh, has been produced in such a short time. And uh, uh, thanks, Enrique and Carlo and Marco. So that's uh, fantastic, fantastic quality. And just just quickly about these industrial revolutions. Uh, maybe we can summarize it as steam, steel, and stars. So there are three revolutions, industrial revolutions. The steam engine, kind of I simplified this a little bit, 1780, automotive and chemistry in 1800s, uh, and then the rapid prototyping, now personal computing, we are just experiencing now this uh, revolution. And it's uh, Jeremy Rifkin who uh, coined the term the third industrial revolution. Uh, it's when manufacturing becomes digital, personal, and affordable. So it's, uh, we, we really live in a, in a fantastic time. And at the same time, we have also an information revolution. I mean, Gutenberg Press was a big thing when finally books could be printed. And things like telegraph, and now personal computing, cell phones, internet, things which are just, it goes so fast, it's incredible. And uh, just visualization and uh, all this 3D printing is part of actually a large step. I mean, 20,000 years ago, people were uh, visualizing numbers on bones here in Africa, in, Africa, in, uh, in the Ans 5,000 years ago with knots. It's also a three-dimensional representation of, uh, of mathematics. 
uh, in Bab Babylonia, the, this is Plimpton 322, a, a, a clay tablet. Uh, then on the papyr papyrus, the ring papyrus, 4,000 years ago, uh, Bakshali manuscript in India, and uh, maybe the Mayan 2,200 years ago, the Mayan uh, uh, language which has been decoded just, uh, just recently. So this is, a, this is an evolution which goes on and now we have, uh, we have uh, communication revolutions. I mentioned this is all kind of merging uh, now with a, with a photo and film were big things, but now with the 3D printing that just is a continuation of a large chain of, uh, of evolution. Uh, the printing 600 years ago, then the laser printing 50 years ago, and now we have this uh, uh, 3D uh, printer. That's, by the way, the printer of Liz, which I think when she bought it was $2,500. Now it's, I think you can get it for 1000 or a little bit more. It's amazing how the prices go down. Uh, and then there is also the perception, uh, like the eyeglass, microscope, telescope, X-rays, MRI, and now we have the 3D scans, and all these, of course, merges together. I mean, you can scan something and then print it, like this company which I mentioned, which was uh, the movie about early on. They actually have a, you know, they copy stuff. They take a, uh, something, scan it, and then they, they print it. So uh, the copy machine is kind of uh, using all these revolutions. Uh, 3D scanner, that was essentially kind of a scanner which they have used in that, in that movie. And then I'm a teacher, I'm a math teacher, so uh, for me it's exciting to, to see these uh, revolutions in the classroom. I mean, again, this is a chain of things which happen, the Abacus blackboard. Computer algebra system, that's what I uh, actually witnessed myself. The calculator, my father was a teacher too and brought home the first first calculator actually was hundreds of dollars and was amazing for me as a kid and now we have uh, you know we have uh, uh, computer algebra systems which can generate uh, uh, 3d models which you can in principle print and I want to talk about this mostly today <coughs> so I made once this slide which summarizes all these revolutions in the in the in the classroom just about you know when I was in when I was in primary school, or kind of things which came out, like you know, when I was in uh, maybe class, TVs were big, or VHS. These were things which were shown in the classroom, and and even quite recently, DVDs were were uh, uh, were still shown. Now I think that's also on the go. And YouTube, <laughs> hello YouTube. YouTube is uh, is the king, and uh, everything is online. Everything is available. It's amazing. Just. Also from the mathematical side, kind of the computer algebra system. When I was a student, I was, I was exposed to computer algebra systems, which some of them don't exist anymore or have evolved. Mathematica, that's what I use now since 20 years. It's a fantastic system, but uh, there are all these M's, Maxima, Mathematica, Maple, MATLAB, and Magma. So they, they all do essentially the same. But they're fantastic, uh, fantastic systems. And, uh, and then, of course, we have these graphing calculators and iPad and Wolfram Alpha. All these things have just revolutionized the way how we, how we, how we teach today. It's an amazing time. I mean, from year to year, you have new things. I mean, three years ago, you know, Wolfram Alpha was not there. Now we can, the students are just going online and put their whole work into <laughs> the search engine and they get the answer. <laughs> so we have, to, we have to cope with this uh, as teachers. <clears throat> so that's kind of when I was a high school kid, I was tinkering with things. This was my graphing calculator. I actually opened it, made surgery, and uh, this is a joystick. So I used it as a joystick and the printer was kind of the, the, the screen. So I could, could make moon landing with this. And then there was attached here, this was my, oh, my room was actually guided by the graphing calculator. I don't know how it survived it, but it survived all this soldiering, you know, <laughs> deep inside the brain of that uh, poor Texas instrument. And that, uh, there was an article I actually wrote in for Chip. I don't know whether this journal still exists. But that, was a, that was the time. And uh, now I want to shift gears and talk about something about uh, math, math and about Archimedes, especially because uh, we wrote an article, Liz and I, on Archimedes because it's his 2300th birthday this year. So, depending on how you count, plus or take, take or, or, or give one year. Uh, so, Archimedes, 
He was a great uh, mathematician, a great thinker, and uh, he dealt with uh, solids like the intersection of two cylinders or the intersection of three cylinders. I will mention this example again because this is quite an interesting example for us to uh, illustrate some software. He was uh, generalizing this, he was looking at domes uh, and uh, actually showed that the volume is two-thirds of the uh, inscribed uh, uh, prism. So kind of, I, I, I just generated or regenerated this in, in a way so that you can actually see how these domes are created. You can, could print this in principle and uh, kind of figure out the proof of this. I don't want, even so the title said proofs in mathematics, I don't want to talk too much about proofs in mathematics, but show mostly pictures. And, but it's a fantastic result uh, which Archimedes uh, had. And he also dealt with solids like this, which is the hoof intersection of, a, of two planes and, uh, and a cylinder. And it's probably the, the birthplace of calculus because Archimedes was the first time using uh, infinitesimal slicing there. So it's quite a, quite a remarkable object. And uh, the, the combination of the, the thing he was most proud of was his proof for the formula of the uh, volume of the sphere. And it, it's a genius idea. He compared the volume of the sphere with the outside of, the, of a cone inside a cylinder. So he proved that the volume is the same by just looking at the slices. Each of these slices has the same volume, uh, same area than this slice here. And this is pretty much what the 3D printer does when it builds the, the solid, right? It kind of builds layer by layer and by layer, and so you can really illustrate calculus very well with this, uh, with this printer. And I, I, I teach single variable calculus now. You can, you can explain a lot of calculus with, uh, with this idea. But this is a genius idea. It's called the Cavalieri principle. And actually what we did, we built this with a, I mean, this is a, a printed with a 3D printer, and you can actually kind of see or drink the proof of Archimedes. <laughs> because what it is, I mean, you start with a, this is the half, the half sphere, and below is a, is, a, is a cylinder and a cone. And so the complement of the, of the cone in the cylinder it's demonstrated here with the water that it actually has the same has the same volume. Let me just show you the proof again, so you can fill it with beer or whatever you want, and then afterwards drink that. We didn't we, we don't sell this, so, but you can download it on a, on the on the website on the on the project side of Liz. We have the source code available for this uh, for this object. It has included a hole inside so that you can really you know, can print it and drink. So that's, uh, that's uh, uh, the proof of Archimedes that the sphere, of the, the sphere has a, a volume for pi third. <coughs> and you can put it, throw it into a, a Google Earth, right? And then you see the object here. You can make your virtual ex exhibit. That's the place where I work here in the Science Center. Uh, beautiful place. And uh, you can even fly through <laughs> with a Google, uh, you know, flight simulator. I did not did not crash here. I often crash and flying around this object. So. so more about proofs. I mean, the original title had proofs. Let me just still say something about proofs. One example, which is also in the book. Uh, it's an interesting story because it's uh, it's Newton and uh, Gregory. Gregory is not so well known, he was a contemporary of Newton and probably in the shade of Newton, he also died early, so Newton could work on his fame much longer. Uh, but he would be a star today, he was the first to prove the fundamental theorem of calculus. But anyway, they had a dispute and the question was, if you take a, a sphere and you, you, you put spheres around it, how many spheres can you put around it so that they kiss the original sphere but they don't all overlap? I mean, just you think about uh, uh, golf balls, take 13 golf balls, can you, can you, can you place 12 around uh, uh, one dried out? And Newton thought 12, that's the answer. You cannot more, more put more than 12 around and there is no space for 13s. So Gregory thought, no, you can actually put the 13s there. 
And so, I mean, it's clear how you can do that. That's actually a solution in 2D. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can put, that's a kissing problem in 2D. That has been known for quite a while. But in 3D, it's not so clear. You can put more, you can put here 3, and then 3 on the other side. You can kind of see that you can put 12, right? So, uh, but if you shift everything on one side, there is still a lot of space. So you kind of see, there's still a lot of space. So it's not clear, can you really put the 13s or not? And it's close. It's not so, uh, it's not so clear. So here is a, an object I would like to see printed, which kind of illustrates that uh, 12 is really, with 12 it works. That's, this is actually an icosahedron, and you put the spheres on, an icosa, on the icosahedron, and then they kiss all. It's a very symmetric situation. But, uh, but you see there's a lot of space between, you could actually shift this, shift this around. It's a very interesting problem because in four dimensions it had only been solved recently, and in five dimensions it's open, nobody knows. Higher dimensions, no, no idea. So it's a, it's a fantastic problem. And uh, actually it turned out that uh, Newton was right, uh, but only in 1953 there was a proof you know, which was really rigorous. Uh, you, can, you can find the reference in the, in the book. It's a quite interesting uh, proof. It uses uh, some discrete math, some polyhedra, and uh, some area formulas. But it's quite involved because you have to kind of go through it, examples and examples and examples. I don't go into it. And uh, so that's the, that's the story I wanted to tell. And I think the 3D printer could maybe visualize also part of that proof. But that's not yet done. So another example, I think that's, uh, 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 you know, this is a picture. If you look at this picture, you see kind of, you see octahedra, you see four, six octahedra, and then you see there is space for, uh, there is space for tetrahedra here. You see the, the holes, kind of, you could put tetrahedra inside. So if you kind of, if you don't know the volume of the, of the octahedron and the volume of the tetrahedron, what you see is six times the volume of the octahedron plus eight times the volume of the tetrahedron produces again an octahedron which is twice as big and therefore has eight times the volume. And you can kind of see that the volume of the tetrahedron is just one fourth of the volume of the octahedron. It's something kind of, which I think if you print that and give it to a student, they could kind of see the proof without words. So without writing anything down. So the visualization, what I want, the point I want to make is the visualization just using objects is still very, very valuable. And this is another example, you know, show that if you take truncated uh, octahedra, you can actually tessellate space. Something which is not easy to visualize. How can you kind of see that? But if you, if you print that and you give that to somebody, they can see, okay, yeah, that actually works. Or you could print out just that and you could put it together. Uh, and have like a Lego thing and have a proof that this works. You can, you can, you can uh, tessellate space, cover space with such copies of this, uh, of this solid. Or Pythagoras, you know, Pythagoras is a, a theorem which has hundreds of proofs, but kind of, uh, this is a proof which is probably the proof which, uh, which uh, 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 is the original one. So what you have is, uh, you have a, a so here you have a, 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 red, a square and a small square, and the sum of these squares is obviously the, or the volume, I mean, I mean here, the, the area is definitely the, the area of this square. Do you see that? And if it's just what, what happens is this piece has been moved here, uh, this green piece has been moved here, so that has not changed the area, and uh, this is just a change kind of, and what you see is, that this square plus this square is equal to that square. So actually, again, if you print that out, you can give it to a student and actually they see the proof without any kind of animation or any picture. So you just have that. Uh, I would love to print that. So, I mean, there are lots of things I would have to see, see printed to wait until the prices come down a little bit. But that's the, con the conference is about that. <laughs> Uh, this is a visualization that the volume of a tetrahedron is one sixth of the volume of a of a 
of a, uh, of a cube. I have still problems to actually see it here. That's kind of the usual visualization. I think it's better to kind of, if you print it, again, that's what it's actually, we printed that. There was a little bit too thin connections here, so it broke off and it actually, this object is no more alive now or just broken. One has not to make things too thin. And uh, that's maybe the uh, best, also this we, we printed, which is really kind of showing, if you make, an ex if you make this as a, you know, a printed out, you can see that half of the cube, right, that's half of the cube what we see here, is made of three tetraedra. And they all have the same, and they all have the same uh, body. So it's a, it's a fantastic result with, which Archimedes knew already and was the base for, for example, computing the volume of the cone, which was necessary to compute the volume of the sphere. So it's a, it's a, it's a very important result to know that. Uh, again, I shift uh, gears. I've, I'm finished with proofs and want to tell something about uh, uh, tools. Uh, I just only experimented shortly with tools and mostly worked with computer algebra systems, but still kind of mention a few and I'm, I'm sure we, we will hear about more. Uh, there are modelers and uh, there are programs, standalone programs, and there are, op uh, there are uh, uh, mathematical like computer algebra systems. I only learned from the book about the uh, open uh, uh, SCAT and I'm very, very excited about it. I know it maybe just uh, mentioned it. So this is SketchUp something which uh, we have worked quite a bit, especially uh, Liz has worked a lot with SketchUp also, because it was intended for education, and SketchUp is very nice for education purposes. Uh, it's relatively simple, and what we see here is actually the Escher st stair. We will see the Escher stair quite in a, a, a again. Uh, placed into Google Earth, I placed it on as a, as a kind of a model on ETH, that's my alma mater. That's where I uh, was uh, a student. And so that's this uh, Escher stair on the top of uh, ETH main building in Zurich. And here is another view. Uh, so it would be nice to have that actually somewhere. As a, and then uh, uh, here is actually a view where you see the Escher stair. Right, kind of an impossible stair. You always go down, right? You always go down. <laughs> You always go down. And uh, here is a kind of a movie. You can fly around and then find the, the sweet spot where you just see only the, the, the impossible stair. Here we are. Would be great to have that real as a statue somewhere. And uh, so you have to find the place, you know, the right place to actually see the Escher stair. So this is a real object. This is not cheating. So this is a real object, but it just appears to be. Uh, so uh, there are there are modelers like one, two, three design, uh, mesh lab. Actually, mesh lab I like because you can color it. It's kind of you have kind of like a a brush and you can color it with different colors. So that's a that's pretty cool, uh, uh, and just. Very simple, uh, very simple program. Um. <clears throat> so that's again this uh, Escher stair. It's a pretty simple object. The whole thing is just uh, made of a couple of uh, cubes put together. You could actually build this with Lego, you know. But I think 3D printed would be much nicer. And uh, on NetFab, uh, or Mathematica, that's the thing I mostly. Uh, we mostly worked with, and it's very simple to use. And you see, this is this is kind of uh, the first line just generates a, a dodecahedron, and that's a graphics object, and you can export it. Here it's exported as 3ds object. The 3ds object you can place into SketchUp or Google Earth, and it preserves color. It's very nice. So it's uh, also color is is uh, works well. And uh, there are different uh, formats which Mathematica understands. Uh, this is a kind of a, this is a surface generated with parametric plot. And actually this is a real printout of that object with shape waves. We had a project in a, in a, in a multivariable calculus course where students had to print out stuff and I will show some pictures afterwards. But you see, again, uh, an export. This is an export into X3D. That's kind of the follower of a virtual language, uh, a VRL, virtual reality language. Uh, uh, and it's 
it, it, it also supports color. It's like STL, but it supports color, which is nice. You can give it to a printer and, uh, which understands color and, it, and prints it in color like here, uh, sandstone. You can also throw it into a, a virtual reality viewer. Even so virtual reality kind of this has died a little bit. Uh, and just from the book, you know, what I learned just from the book is, uh, I mean, these articles, I mean, I, I wanted to try that out. It's open, open Scott. I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to learn more about this. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, uh, thing and very, very close actually to, to computer algebra systems and, and, and open. And uh, so uh, you, this is, a, this is a model which we have actually seen the intersection of three cylinders. That's something Mathematica cannot do well. So it's actually better than Mathematica in some, in some sense. And I have to show you this. This is kind of just when I saw it, I was so excited. Uh, I, I wrote a few lines which actually export a Mathematica thing. So I take this line here, or this, this whole thing, and uh, let me just go to the command line math <laughs> and I throw it into Mathematica. What it has done is it has produced a, a file example SCAD. So that was actually, let me just remove that so that you don't see that I was not cheating. <laughs> and uh, then I can open that and it of course knows when you have installed it, oh, it opens it in, uh, in that uh, 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 Open SCAD. It's fantastic, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to learn more about this. Uh, so it was very, very easy because uh, it, the language is very, very close to what computer algebra systems do. It's a mathematical thing, and essentially, what this is just doing is replacing some some uh, uh, curly brackets with round brackets. That's essentially, it. <laughs> it's just essentially the same language. <coughs> So, uh, and also you can take unions. I did not real, it was not able to find the intersection, but that's something which Mathematica cannot do, and if they found the intersection of two objects like that. And I should also mention that there are lots of uh, uh, 3D objects already available. I mean, there are whole torrents of 3D objects. And I took a couple, put them into Mathematica, and when you have it in Mathematica, you can export it in any form. This is then export it in a 3DS, you can throw it in Google Earth or whatever you want, or you can print it if you want. So, uh, but these, these were not generated by, by us, this is just what already is out there. <coughs> uh, at the rest of the talk, I just want to show you some pictures about illustrating mathematics, similar what is in the, in the book, and maybe tell something about this. So when I was a, 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 in high school, I was a big fan of semi-regular polytops. Of course, the regular polytops, but the semi-regular ones, which are also called Archimedean uh, solids. And it would be a pain to print out each of them separately. So I put all of them, all the 26, there are, there are 13, and then there are 13 dual ones. And there are 26 in total. Put them all together, and in principle, you could just print them out all at once. And then you have a gem, which has all the 26 semi-regular polytops. Would be really cool. But don't have the funds to print this. Uh, this is a, a one of the kind of a, a full array type uh, uh, polytop. I like these things because what is nice is you can actually assign curvature to each point, add up the curvature, and you get uh, you get always two, which is a uh, kind of Gauss Bonnet. So it's kind of a discrete Gauss Bonnet. Uh, this is a printout done for Mathematica and printed out in. Uh, in, sh in shape ways, and you can do other objects like a, a, a torus or twisted torus, or kind of take things together. This was actually done in Mathematica using graphs. Graphs are uh, very nicely implemented in Mathematica, and you can put them together. There are lots of operations already built, and uh, they are just a bunch of these full already put together and stitched together, and you get a larger object. You could print that. Uh, and the next thing I want to tell you is about. Uh, an exciting thing, these are the polytops in four dimensions. You know, in, in, in three dimensions we have the five polytops, you know, the five, uh, uh, the, the octahedron, icosahedron, uh, tetrahedron, uh, cube, and the what? Dodecahedron. So there are five. 
in, uh, in, in, three, in four dimensions there are six, so it's a more interesting space. Let me just show you uh, all of them. This is the five cell, this is the eight cell, and the color is just the fourth dimension. Color is the fourth dimension. This is the 16 cell, uh, the 24 cell, and this is the 120 cell and the 600 cell. So these are all the six. And I made once a YouTube movie again. Hello, YouTube. Uh, here is part of this. <coughs> Let's show. The eight cell or high cube? This is animated in Mathematica. The 16 cell or orthoplex. Four cell or polyoctahedron. With this, you could tessellate the four dimensional cell space. Or That's an amazing thing. I would like to print this. And finally, the 600 cell or polyoctahedron. This is in five dimensions. In five dimensions, there are only three. Five dimensional cube. Five dimensional cross polygon. So uh, again, I think Leibniz was right. We live in the best of all possible worlds, right? Because in three dimensions and four dimensions, three dimensions we have five, in four dimensions we have six. Afterwards it gets boring, there are only three. <laughs> <laughs> so we live in the most, most exciting space possible. And uh, again, this is the intersection of, uh, intersection of three, intersection of three cylinders. This is kind of a, a solid which which appears in every calculus book. No, for two, this, was the interse this is the intersection with, of three. appears in every calculus book, to, the problem to calculate the volume of this. And I also wanted to mention Povre. I'm a big fan of Povre, which is an open source ray tracer. And it goes very well with uh, Mathematica. You can export things. It's just text like this. this actually, this program here just tells where the camera is, where the light source is, what the background color is, some pigments and then intersection of a cylinder, cylinder, cylinder. So this is the object in, in Povre, and uh, you can animate that. There is a built-in clock. You can make movies in Povre. It's a fantastic uh, thing, completely open source, completely free. I invest time in things which are, uh, uh, which are free and which I know that in 20 years it will still be around. And uh, so this is, this is really nice. And uh, this is uh, in open open SCART, just the same object. Very similar, I think, you know, to Povre, the, the, the language is essentially just the flavor, and the, uh, that's why I'm a big fan of this. I have to learn more about this open SCART. I think that's a, that's a fantastic uh, a thing. Uh, this is another kind of shifting gears again. This is an object which is uh, 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 important or interesting for topologists. It's called the Alexander uh, Sphere. So uh, it's actually something you could wear as, a, as an earring, right, if you print it. <laughs> uh, it's nice. It's kind of a, uh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a ball, but the complement is, is not simply connected. Some, some surprise, you know, something which topologists would think that's not possible. Uh, knots. Uh, this is just uh, that the code for this knot is actually on the in the book. It's the addition. You can add knots because they are just functions. You can add them and you can see them. This is actually a printed out knot, just printed out from uh, from Mathematica, exported and uh, into SDL and then sent to Shapeways. It's a very small. You see, actually here, this is on the ground. Uh, I put it on the ground, a street, and you see it's actually pretty small. It's maybe that small, and so it was also pretty cheap. It was only a couple of dollars, five dollars, but it's, 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 uh, it's amazing. Just we tried out different, uh, also, uh, 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 different materials. This is the Möbius strip. Everything has to be made for 3D printing. Everything has to be made thicker, right, so that it prints well. And I think 
I think also things look nicer if you think like a 3D printer. So it's not just surfaces, what you usually see in visualizations. So it's real, you know, you could really. Uh, and this is another uh, 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 famous object for, uh, for topologies. It's called the Antoine necklace. Also something you could wear. Uh, but it's a, it's a contour set so, uh, so that uh, with, where, where the complement is not simply connected. It's just something amazing. I mean, something you would not expect if you know about contour sets, that the complement can be so complicated topologically. But you would imagine you can go down. I mean, this ring would again be made of small rings. And you could, depending on your printer, you could actually make this as fine as, as, as you want. This is a. a uh, just because Enric asked about uh, the Calabi-Yau surface. Again, I think I've never seen such a yeah. stair. Yeah, I've never seen kind of, a, a, you know, the, the, the thing printed out. And uh, so they did it. <laughs> Fantastic. It's kind of an icon of, of, uh, of string theory. And I think we're in the right place here. <laughs> Uh, this is an animation. Again, I, ch I, I think when you think like a 3D printer, things become nicer, right, uh, uh, than just surfaces. Because you kind of think, but how would you make that so that it actually prints? You have to make it thick. <coughs> and so there are different versions of this uh, Calabi Yau. There are kind of different uh, complexities. For every N, you can build one and uh, you can animate it as a parameter which you can animate. People are excited about this. This is kind of the SDL file, and uh, this is kind of something how it would look on shapeways. I just looked at how much it would cost. It's still quite expensive. That would cost $35. And so with, a, with, a, with the shipping and everything, it usually is, is, is much more. So, uh, and it's also much smaller. This is then much smaller than what, what you see here. So I think for teaching it, it really is important that you have kind of si a size which you can show around, and so that's that's much nicer. Uh, this is something I just uh, uh, you know there is a there's a whole movement called sacred geometry, which uh, they have kind of an object called the metratron. I don't understand all this, but I think it's a beautiful object, and actually it uh, it's, it it uh, it reminds me of this drone. So you could actually kind of make make out of that. You could build a. Uh, uh, drones. This is a, this is from a from a page which sells uh, 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 3D printing stuff like drones, and there are other other uh, uh, services. I'm sure you have you have seen them. Materialize is one. Sculptor is one. Uh, you have tried out a couple of them, but they are still quite expensive. And I think having having your own printer is is definitely a, 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 a valuable thing. This is kind of these are uh, objects just. Uh, which I took from from teaching and kind of uh, uh, which and tried to make it so that it can be can be printed uh, surfaces or the 3D sphere. Again, that's actually something which uh, uh, theoretical physicists are excited about. The 3D sphere is SU2. It's the the weak force, right? It's the gauge group for the weak force. It's kind of a, it's a beautiful object, the three-dimensional sphere. And this is animated in Povre, just to, to tell you, it's, a, it's just beautiful. It's called the Hopf vibration. <coughs> so what it does, it, you turn in, in the in the in the in, in the in the higher dimensional space, and then you see things. Uh, so more basic, the uh, Apollonian cone, kind of visualize the conic section. This is something which you see in the movie. I don't know whether you have seen the movie Agora, which uh, 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 Rachel Weisz plays, a uh, uh, math teacher, and that's from that movie. Let's see, maybe we can make it louder. <coughs> And here you see the cone. That's why I show it. Yes, I got it to teach them about the four curves. The circle. And the ellipse. Your rest is really neat here by now. Parabola. And the hyperbola. It's, uh, it's truly beautiful. You know, I often look at it and I always wonder, why does the circle close us in such shapes. 
what I need to sit here and listen to you. I bore you. It's been a long time since I've done anything but beat my head against the stone. By the way, I think this would be nice to have as an object kind of for the classroom, this uh, Apollonian cone. Uh, perfectly printable, I think. So uh, other uh, thing, like in, uh, I'm a big fan of probability theory. This is a random walk. Just visualized in a way so that you can actually could print it. Right? You, you go randomly around, kind of like you, you follow a bird who is, which is drunk and flies around, and you, 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 you track the path. So uh, it's an interesting thing that in three dimensions it will actually not return with probability one, while in two dimensions if you have a, a drunken uh, mouse, it will always return back. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's something which recently was in the news, maybe because of uh, the movie Pi. I don't know whether you have seen the movie Pi. So Pi is a lot in the news. So there are some mathematicians, Borwein, Bailey, and uh, so they have uh, they have looked at pi, looked at expanded in some uh, base, like base four, and then take, depending on whether it's zero, one, two, or three, go in different directions, then you visualize pi. Or in three dimensions, you make it in base six. One thinks this is like a random walk, but nobody has proven that. It's quite an interesting thing. And they visualize lots of other numbers, not only pi. Uh, they have written a whole article about that. I'm also a big fan of, uh, of optics. This is a, an icon from, uh, from uh, 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 optics, which is called the coffee cup caustic. I don't know whether you have looked. If, if you next time look into a coffee cup and uh, you look from above, you see this shape. The light produces this, uh, one would call it a caustic. This is where all the light will focus. Right? This is the coffee uh, cup boundary. The light, which comes from one source, will just focus and on a curve, and that's the caustic. It's very interesting, and uh, I mean, already for simple shapes like a, a donut, if you look at the wave fronts, how they move out, it's highly non trivial, it's completely uh, crazy. Uh, also, for surfaces of revolutions, uh, like here on a donut, you see actually light going out, and you see that there will be places then when the light will focus. This is kind of, you know. If this, is a, if this is a planet and this is a, a, like halo and this is a, a place where an earthquake starts, these are the places where you don't want to be because that's where the damage is. That's really where an application of this, uh, of this uh, uh, wave fronts is in, for example, earthquake dynamics. And uh, it's, beautiful. it's a beautiful part of differential geometry. And even in the simplest cases, like you take a cube and you put on a cube a light, and you let it uh, evolve, these wave fronts become very complicated already after a, sh a short time. Very, very interesting problems. And even for simple uh, objects like the ellipsoid, they're open, open problems. This is Jacobi's last statement that you see here the caustic, right? This is where light has kind of focused. It has started here. And then that's almost there are four cusps. That's an open problem. Nobody knows. Even so, the, the flow is completely, uh, completely uh, integrable. Everything is perfectly nice. But so a student uh, of mine has once, uh, has once uh, illustrated this, Michael Theodoresco, in 19, uh, 2009. You see here, this is kind of just a, an ellipsoid, which is very close to a sphere. And you see these this, uh, uh, four cusps, if it's, if it's a, a more uh, a uh, longer ellipsoid, the, the, the caustics become much more complicated. But there are always four, but nobody knows why. Very, very beautiful and very interesting. Uh, this is another kind of object which is famous. It's, uh, it's part of spectral theory. There was a, a question of uh, Mark Katz, which was, can you hear the shape of a drum? If you listen to a drum, can you actually find out what the shape of the drum was? And uh, Gordon and Webb, they found examples. These are two drums. If you, dr if, you, if you hit this drum or this drum, they sound exactly the same. So that would be actually nice maybe to print it and even hear it, <laughs> that it has the same, uh, the same uh, spectrum. Uh, one doesn't, by the way, again, one doesn't know whether there is a really convex drum, a round drum, which has this property. Nobody knows. This is a visualization of a matrix, which I'm working on. I uh, know it's quite interesting. It's a Dirac operator in, in graph theory. Also, kind of, you could print it. This is an icon from chaos theory, the Lorentz attractor, which is, uh, I don't know whether you have uh, uh, heard about this, which is uh, uh, called a strange attractor. 
I would love to have that on my desk, <laughs> print it out. Uh, this is a visualization, kind of a, an animation of that. Uh, these are the differential equations, very simple. Uh, Conrad Lawrence, uh, Lawrence was, uh, was uh, uh, coining the term. This is another flow, kind of a, in, 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 in the three-dimensional donut. But I just mentioned it that it's quite easy to visualize things uh, with the right software, like a computer algebra system. And in principle, you could print that out and actually uh, show it to somebody. This is another open problem. Uh, uh, the problem is to have a, a, a cuboid, rectangular cuboid, so that the, all the lengths are integers. These lengths are integers. The diagonals are integers. And the long diagonal is also an integer. Nobody knows whether it exists. And here is a printout. It's actually, again, very small. We printed it out very small. It's, it, it already broke. It was so fragile because it was too thin. But it was just as, as little. I would like to see this maybe bigger. But again, we tried out with other material. And you see here, it's kind of you know, the details. This is another problem which I, it's not understood. A simple problem. You let the coin fall on the ground. You want to see how this actually moves. Here's the animation, you know, a stick falling on the ground. Uh, nobody understands this, uh, this, uh, this dynamics. It's believed to be chaotic in part, and uh, in some parts it's, uh, it's regular. It's simple enough, but uh, mathematics is not able to, to, to know that. But just uh, kind of to have that stroboscopic picture, and see this actually in 3D, like here, would actually be nice, kind of as a sculpture, maybe, you know, mathematically inspired sculpture. <coughs> or uh, these are geometric objects. I learned that in high school. This is a triangle, and you define some points, like the midpoints and the base of the heights, and three other points, and these nine points lie on a circle. It's a mirac miraculous thing. It's called the Feuerbach. Uh, circle, nine point circle. But to print that and maybe wear it would be great. <laughs> and that's also that's a, a famous uh, uh, approach of Hippocrates to, to the quadrature of the circle. You know, people thought, you know, how do you kind of calculate the, the area of a, of a disk? And so what Hippocrates found is that these two moons here together have the same area than the triangle. So there's a round object and a triangle object which have the same area. And this is an animation of this. Uh, it's also called the Lune. It's amazing. You see, this triangle has the same area and these two things together. And uh, this is a theorem which is uh, very beautiful. It's more or less empirical. <laughs> if you trisect a triangle, triangle, the, an arbitrary triangle, it trisects the angles, you get here intersection points which always lie on an equilateral triangle. Fantastic result. Not so easy to prove. And, uh, but it would be nice to print it somehow, or Pappus theorem, which also kind of, you take arbitrary points on, a, on an ellipse and you take some intersections and you get, you're always on a, on a line. Fantastic results. Would be nice to print. Piano curve, a space stealing curve, uh, we will hear more about this, uh, uh, pen, uh, this uh, aperiodic tilings. This is something uh, uh, which you could print, or fractals, like, like here, fractals. I, I want, this is kind of part of linear algebra. They are just eigenvalues of a matrix. You change a parameter, and then you see kind of this battle of the eigenvalues, which is beautiful. And actually, uh, nobody understands anything about this. It's completely open. So it's kind of you, you can think about this kind of like an army of uh, you know, and then they they decide to conquer, and uh, they don't like each other, so they rebel each other. So that's what eigenvalues do of random matrices. But it's not random. That makes it interesting. This is a kind of a devil stare uh, in three D. The Mandelbrot set, I don't know whether you know the Mandelbrot set, it's a famous object. I actually put it in Trieste, uh, in the Trieste harbor so that you can, act, so you can fly, so you can fly through in, uh, in, 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 in Google Earth. It's quite challenging to fly, fly around this uh, fractal. And uh, so this is, I also put it in Boston. Uh, 
kind of, uh, because in Boston the buildings are built nicer, so you can actually fly through the buildings, right? So, uh, <laughs> so you can, uh, and, or you can put it into a, by the way, these are just experiments. I experimented with other formats like X3D and uh, object format. Object doesn't uh, allow for color. X3D allows for color. And this is, the, this is the Pythagoras tree. This is the gamma function or the theta function, which actually, this is the largest graphing calculator ever. I was putting it into a, a near, near, a, near the science center. And then you can fly through. And uh, so you see all the roots of the zeta function, which are believed to be on a line. Nobody knows. It's called the Riemann hypothesis. <coughs> and again, you can also fly through it uh, with, a, with, a, with a Google Flight uh, simulator, which just comes now. So. But again, I, I would not have we would not have thought about this without the 3D printing thing because you have to when you do it for the printer, you have to think differently. You have you cannot have too much complexity. Things have to be nice, and that's actually suited also well for uh, for the for the uh, Google Earth. This is a solid on interaction. Also something physicists love. Uh, Sorti Hexlet. You see actually these things also in the book. This was actually printed out. Again, this was too thin. You see here the breaks. This was too thin to be uh, uh, stable. Uh, safe and surface, some surface which, you, which is flexible. A proof that you can actually, uh, uh, densest packings are not unique in space. This is, I, I did that once for Noah Melchies who found a surface which has a lot of lines on it. This is an animation of that surface. Beautiful surfaces, and I would love to see this kind of printed. Uh, uh, could make Noam a big present, you know, to print this. And or oh, this is also something you see in the book: the proof that the, another proof of the sphere formula, sphere volume formula, the proof which we have seen here in real time. So other surfaces, and when you do things for the printer, you have to kind of think about how to do things. This is a possibility, or just fill it out and make it fatter. Uh, or this I would like to see printed, something you could actually do kind of for a classroom to show the moiré uh, effect. You know, you have just to print two of them and then you can show it, put it on top of each other. The impossible, the Penrose triangle, we have seen that, that was the all kind of things. You know, you see here kind of a proof, kind of an impossible proof. This triangle has the same area. Oh, you have it. Yes. Wonderful. So, yeah, oh great. So this is, a, this is kind of a paradox. You see this triangle, this red triangle, and this green triangle, they have all the same area. They are the same, they are the same shapes, also this. But there is one, one missing here. Even so, the triangles are the same. Everything is the same. So that would be nice to actually print and to, to, uh, to see. Uh, so a wish list, uh, of course, things are still difficult. I cannot uh, appreciate, I mean, <laughs> Uh, uh, tell it firsthand because I did not really work with a 3D printer, but Lise has has uh, has gone through all these processes. It's not easy uh, uh, at first, and uh, some uh, you know this is a this is actually from from the scientific uh, uh, American. It's really big, and in the classroom, I think uh, you know there are websites which kind of uh, uh, marvel about this. Uh, this is again from the. From the, from the Scientific American. Or physics experiment, I mean, I did not even talk only about math. We also printed one of the things which Archimedes did, which is the uh, pump, you know, this famous pump. This you can actually use, and you can put it in the, uh, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the drilling machine and actually pump. But physics experiment, I think that would be a completely other world for 3D printing. And uh, so what is definitely needed is more open source conversion things. And computer algebra so support is, especially for open source uh, systems, is not yet there. And then more libraries for, uh, for <coughs> education. And actually we plan to have all these things which, which I showed you put it on a, on a website so that you can actually uh, uh, do it and uh, uh, run it yourself and have also the objects to print. Uh, 
So these are some, just uh, to, to, to end this, uh, some, some objects which students without any computer algebra exposure did as a final project. They did it in, in maybe two, three hours. Some of them used more time, but it's something, computer algebra system you learn very, very fast. You, uh, 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 and it's very natural. It's not like a modeler where you have to first learn the interface because it's, it's all based on mathematics. And, and they did fantastic objects. And they got the grant of $5,000 to print this. I still did not uh, uh, do that. It's something I have to do uh, once I have a little bit more time. But all these objects we hope to, to print. And uh, uh, it's amazing what they, what they did in a, in a, relatively, in a relatively short time. <coughs> So here's sort of White House. <laughs> uh, and of course, it was Christmas time. So at that time, uh, when, when this was done last uh, fall, so there, there are lots of uh, uh, objects. Uh, and so on. There's 300. <laughs> so uh, that's the end. <laughs> Did you see the TARDIS from the doctor in one of these designs which the students got? The what? Uh, the TARDIS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> doctor who? Uh, the TARDIS. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of the objects which, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was even one who has built Harry Potter, you know, with details. And so uh, we placed it in, in Google Earth, and then you can fly through it, and you can actually make a fight <laughs> with it. It's not yet that you can animate in Google Earth, but that would be great. <laughs> You mentioned you, you would like to see these things printed. Oh, yeah, that would be fantastic, yeah. What, what prevents you to print it? Oh, it's the money. It's just too, too expensive, <laughs> yeah. But if you, if you use this printer, you can low cost this thing. Can you, see? you know, uh, uh, what would be here, the issue would be the time to spend. I, I know that Lisa spent a lot of time with it, and I'm sure, I mean, Gaia, you probably know. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, is, it, it is time consuming still, and it's not that easy. The design bottle, the big one, went all night through. Exactly. So if you if you imagine 300 objects, 300 nights, that would be a year just printing. <laughs> it would be impossible, I think, just practically impossible to do that. People can share this printing. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, not sorry. But anyway, we we could try. I mean, to print it here, that's Oh, that would be fantastic. I mean, I can give you the. All the STL files, <laughs> but no, no, uh, no, no, but it, it, it well, would be impossible. No, it would yeah, be. The most representative yeah, maybe some. some, some there is another issue. Not everything really prints oh, yeah, out of the of the box. You have to tune it sometimes. We and learn how to uh, yeah. let's say, make supports around the, the object and then yes. it out. So, I mean, we can try. I mean. Yeah, there are holes sometimes, holes which you don't are not aware of, and things like. It can take a lot of uh, time to actually make it really printable. Still, yeah. You've been teaching uh, calculus? Or yes, I'm, 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 I'm mostly teaching calculus. Yeah, that was a multivariable calculus and, and, course. And then you have the uh, experience with the students that uh, is a follow up from your calculus discipline in the sense that you now have been using these yes. models. Yes. So you think that they actually improve their reasoning or just their skill to see what... Oh, no, they were excited. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they were... First of all, they are excited about the technology. Then they are excited about visualizing things. That's, that's, that's challenging. And uh, of yeah, course, not, no, also, the, also the reasoning. I think it helps to, 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 for the reasoning. I think it's, 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 a, it's a huge benefit for, for, uh, for teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Because we always, uh, my generation saw the Pythagoras theorem on the, on the printed on, on the board, no? Yeah. Then if you start to see it, yeah. it's different. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different thing to see it real. And, uh, play with the area. Yes, <laughs> yes. But then having it really there, imagine you would have it really, then you could bring it just the next day in the, in the classroom, that would be yeah. just even yeah. even better. But that's we are not yet in it the. Should be nice yeah. the other way around. You give it the area, and the people should discover the yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. So yes. The yes. 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 There, there are infinitely many possibilities. A good, great idea. I mean, one could make a course out of that, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. No one could make a whole course about that. 
fantastic. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much again.